good YouTube, DG Whips here back again with another video. Today I'm gonna to be talking about how to turbo your car or any car and how to basically build your own turbo kit. You don't have to buy a custom pre-made kit for your car and then you might have a car that, that's not even available anyway. Like, like say you wanna turbo your Toyota Prius or something dumb like that. It's not gonna really be a lot of choices for you so you are gonna to have to make your own kit and you can turbo any car that has an engine anything that has an engine you can turbo and i'm going to basically go into how you can do that how to go about that and how i did that because mine is pretty much fully custom this is not a kit that i bought i bought everything individually and if you're looking to turbo your car and you want to do it uh, fully custom this is actually the best way i think the way to go and i want to just educate you guys on how you can go about it and actually do it for a pretty affordable price before i start the video if you're new to the channel and you like the video don't forget to like comment and subscribe it really helps me out we're almost at 2k subscribers let's go ahead and get to it but yeah let's go ahead and jump right in so to turbo your car the most important thing is you're going to need to obviously get a turbo um that's pretty self-explanatory but the way the turbo works is it actually is hooked up to your exhaust uses the exhaust pressure to spin a propeller that's connected to a turbine that's connected to a compressor wheel and it spins the compressor wheel compresses the air and and charges it into your engine which forces pressurized air into the engine which means more air gets in the engine and more power it's a little more complex than that but that's just basically what's happening so what, the first thing you need to do is figure out how you're gonna hook up your turbo to your exhaust so i have a little t3 turbo here this is just like a backup or if i want to try to put it on see if i can get quicker spool or something i just have this chilling here this is like the t3 flange most people though have something on their headers like custom headers that has this flange where you can bolt this directly on you're gonna want this to catch exhaust flow so you can actually spin the wheel and compress the air and then send it uh, into your engine and then the exhaust gases are going to come out through here and through your exhaust now you actually can mount this anywhere on your exhaust and if you are new to my channel i actually have a rear mount turbo set up where my turbo is actually right here um so you can mount it anywhere on your exhaust anywhere works if you have like a four cylinder car you usually can buy headers for your car that is made to fit a turbo onto uh i have a v6 so that's not as simple i'd either have to do twin and then custom headers to hook up turbos to each side or have a way to where the exhaust comes into one and then hook the turbo up that way, which is what I did. And because I had a V6, that was a big reason why I did rear mount. I didn't want to have to figure out the turbo in here and I didn't want to buy a kit. So I would have to do a lot of custom work anyway. And just having the turbo in the engine would have been a little, um, little tight and so i decided to do a rear mount i figured that was the most beneficial to me so get the turbo away to mount to your exhaust now you're also going to need to be able to get that compressed air uh to the throttle body right so this is coming all the way from the turbo back all the way to this intercooler here you need an intercooler because the turbocharger compresses air and compressed air gets really hot so this is actually going to cool the air before it goes into the engine because colder air is more dense and if you, the air is too hot, it's gonna cause problems with, with pre-detonation and everything like that. So you're gonna want the air that goes in the engine as cool as possible. So you're gonna need your hot and cold side. Your hot side is your exhaust side where the turbo mounts to, and then your cold side where the turbocharger actually sends the charged air into the engine. I do not recommend not running an intercooler in any setup. It's just not beneficial to not run an intercooler. And you're gonna have issues with intake temperatures and everything like that. So always run an intercooler. I don't have a super big one because I did a rear mount and I'm not running a lot of boost. Always have an intercooler no matter what. This is air to air. If you want a really efficient intercooler, you can do air to water, but then you have to do a separate water tank and a pump and everything. And that's just really expensive and tedious. You gotta figure that out. I was considering doing that, but I decided not to. It was just a lot of work. Once you figure out the hot and cold side, the turbocharger needs oil to cool down, and a lot of them will also use coolant to cool down as well. Turbochargers get really hot. So you're gonna have to run an oil line, an oil feed to the top of your turbo. It's really hard to see. I'm not gonna really be able to show you properly, unfortunately, but maybe I'll put a picture up. It's gonna send oil through the turbo to cool it down, and then you're gonna need an oil drain. Now, on most setups, you will have the oil drain gravity feed back into the oil pan. However, I can't do that because my turbo is 10 feet away from the engine. So I actually have a scavenge pump here that actually pumps the oil back to the engine in order to scavenge all the oil out of the turbo. Because if oil doesn't get out of there fast enough, it will back up and you will start smoking like crazy. And that's not good. So you got to plumb oil lines. And then if your turbo is in the engine bay, I do recommend running water lines. 
Now, because mine is getting air cooled a bunch from being underneath the car and everything, I decided not to and everything's been fine. It's up to you. I, I guess I would recommend running water lines, but it was a big pain to run oil lines and water lines front and back of the car. So I just decided against it. I also have an oil cooler here. Now this is optional. This depends on your build, your car. Um, with G's, the oil temps can get really high pretty easy. So I decided to run an oil cooler. This is just a little cheap little one. This is like a hundred dollar one. Um, I need to clean this setup here. I need to get a 90 and everything, but but yeah, you're going to want usually bigger injectors to deliver more fuel because you're sending way more air into the engine and with more air, you need more fuel. Otherwise, you're going to run lean and that will cause your engine to blow up if you run it like that too long. So I have bigger injectors and a bigger fuel pump. You're going to have to do research on your own particular vehicle and what's best for you and the amount of power and boost you're running. But typically, you're going to want a bigger fuel system. And it's just cool to do this anyway because you can upgrade the lines. You can run E85. I'm on full E85 right now. E85 is cheaper than 91 and it's better for your engine once you get tuned. So I recommend that. But yeah, bigger fuel system, you're definitely going to need that. Now, important thing when you're running boost, you're going to need to monitor certain things because if your car didn't come with boost, you're not gonna have a boost gauge and everything so these are the three minimum i recommend i actually recommend four i am gonna run uh the fourth one at some point the oil temperature gauge but right now i have the three essential boost gauge obviously you need to know how much boost you're running if you're not running a boost gauge you're kind of you're kind of goofy um air fuel ratio gauge i have a glow shift one i kind of recommend aem Especially because I paid 200 bucks for this and this isn't the best one I discovered. It looks cool though. And then oil pressure. I am going to get one that matches eventually. I just needed a, a cheap little one. It's like a $20 one. I got an AutoZone, but it works. You need to know if your air fuel ratio is good because if you're running lean all the time, that is really not good. Your engine cylinder temperatures are going to get really hot and you're going to cause detonation and everything. This will just blow your engine up if you're running lean. So you need to know if your air fuel, air fuel ratios are good. It's not good to not have this. I would not recommend skipping out on this. Oil pressure, you need to know if you have oil pressure because if you lose oil pressure and you don't know, um, your engine will blow up. So this is just a lot of fail safe. Make sure your engine is not blowing up. You want to know if you're actually making boost, if you're making the proper boost, if you're overboosting, if you have a boost leak, you're not making enough boost, all that stuff. So these are really essential. I also strongly re recommend that you have oil temperature gauge because if your oil starts getting too hot, it will actually lose its viscosity and not lubricate the engine properly. And it's not going to be protecting the engine as much. So if you were gonna skip out on one of these, you can technically skip out on oil pressure because you usually have an oil light, but that light is usually like the, oh, uh, that's not good. Um, I need to turn the car off immediately. It's a little too late light. So I recommend oil pressure light. Just get the gauges. The only really expensive one is the wide band. It's like $200 on AM one is about the same, I think. But yeah, gauges are super important if you're on boost. Now, before I forget to mention, you're gonna need a way to vent boost because the way the turbocharger works, if you don't vent boost, you will literally make boost infinitely to like 100 PSI until your engine blows up, right? So there are two different ways to vent the boost. So if you wanna vent your boost at seven PSI, you have what's called a wastegate. Now this is an internal wastegated one. I have an external wastegated one. There are pros and cons to both. Do your own research on what you're trying to do, but basically this actuator will open a valve that will start letting exhaust pressure out at a certain PSI boost. That way you stay at that boost once you hit it and you don't go over or under if it's working correctly. Now I have an external one, which I will show you right now. This is a little more expensive way to do it, but this is a little better. This is hooked up straight to the exhaust and it's catching the exhaust flow where I have it mounted. I did move it because it wasn't at a good spot before, but it's basically a little valve on the exhaust that will open once you start hitting a certain amount of boost pressure. And mine is set. I have a two pound spring in there, so it will naturally open at like two pounds, but I have a boost controller hooked up so I actually can adjust it. So I recommend running boost controller as well. And a boost controller basically can trick the wastegate into opening at a different time than it's automatically adjusted for. But yeah, this is a cheaper way to go do internal gate and you don't have to get an external wastegate because my external gate was like 200 bucks. And if you just get an internal one, then you don't have to worry about that. It's already in the turbo and you can just adjust adjust the actuator rod and everything like that. But obviously know what you want to do with your build and do what uh, you see fit. Now, one thing that is technically optional, but I recommend is getting a blow off valve. Whenever you hear a turbo car, these are usually what you're going to hear whenever they let off the gas. 
and it lets all the boost pressure out of your intake system when you let off the gas because what happens is if you don't have this it will all build up and try to go into the engine that's closed and it'll basically surge back to the turbo which will make a different noise it'll, it'll cause a, it's called flutter which some people say is bad for the turbo uh, it's not helping the turbo but it's not really hurting it that much either unless you're running uh, a really high amount of boost usually the turbos can handle it i even have an anti-surge turbo so it can definitely handle not running this i just like the sound and this does help with getting back on a boost quicker anyway because it doesn't stop the turbo from like uh it doesn't slow the turbo down from spinning the surge will stop the turbo spinning a lot so it, you'll have to rebuild boost if you get back on the gas if you're in a track oriented setting so just keep that in mind i think i covered mostly all the little things that your essentials you need your hot and cold side you need to run oil lines and possible coolant lines you need to vent your valve covers run a pcv system you need gauges fuel system everything like that i think it pretty much touched on everything now also if you have a manual car you're probably going to upgrade your clutch as well because your stock clutch will probably start slipping if you run a decent amount of boost again this is very general for just trying to turbo any car you're going to want to do your own research and know the specifics on what you want out of your car how much power know how much power your engine can take if you're not going to be building it i did not build mine i will build mine eventually or swap it we'll see and that's why i'm not trying to go crazy on boost i'm only going to be running seven pounds but seven pounds is more than enough for me i'm spinning tires at four and i'm having a lot of fun with it as is but that's pretty much how to turbo any car you gotta mount it to the exhaust have a way to get the charged air into the intake i have a whole bunch of piping and everything you can usually have a shop fabricate this stuff for you if you don't want to go the route i did and just use a bunch of couplers and piping and route everything yourself and cut and all that i did have an I did have an exhaust shop uh, do my exhaust so I can mount the turbo to my exhaust using V-bands and everything. Again, I have a really custom setup, so it's a little janky in some spots, but I think it's pretty cool. So yeah, I uh, hope I'm not missing anything major. I think it pretty much touched on the basics to turbo your car. Now, obviously when you turbo your car and everything is installed, working right, you're not smoking, everything is working, you're gonna wanna get tuned because your car doesn't know what's going on. It's kind of freaking out. It doesn't understand why it's getting a lot more compressed air into the engine because your car was not turbo from factory you're gonna have to get tuned you are gonna have to pay some good money to do that uh, because if you get a bad tuner uh, it's just gonna blow up so make sure you you know a good tuner do your research and don't try to cheap out on that prepare to spend more than you think there's gonna be a lot of miscellaneous things you need like an fittings lines vacuum lines clamps couplers etc etc the turbo life is not easy, but it's so, so worth it. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video useful. If you regularly follow my channel, I'm getting this dyno for seven pounds tonight. I got it dyno for four, but I have to come back. And tonight we're going for seven pounds, so I cannot wait. I'm so excited. But yeah, other than that, I hope you guys found the video helpful. I will see you guys next time.